Okay, so floating panels. Well, it's been a while and I've actually been working on it and I had some issues, so that's why I didn't post any update. But I now want to share what those issues are and uh, I think we found a solution for them. It's not really a solution as uh, I'll explain and I'll try to go on. I've had some more issues, but again, we'll get to it. So the first thing which I actually talked about in the last video is that uh, I wanted to do a panel that's floating but still preserves usability in the form of fits low. So if you try to go all bottom left with the mouse and click, you should always be able to trigger the up menu as an example. And what that means is that uh, we need a bigger window compared to what the dock actually is so that all of the input, input that's around the panel gets redirected inside of it. So we need a bigger window with inside of it the panel and all, all outside of the panel is transparent, which is what we did in the last video. If you haven't seen it, go give it a rewatch. And the issue was that the shadow of the window is managed by Kwin and it was drawn at the, like the larger window, which means that we have the shadow and then empty space and then inside of it the panel which is a problem because the shadow was not actually attached to the panel, which is what we want. So the basically only way to solve this was to use CSD shadows and those are a mess. Like uh, Latidoc does that. I honestly did not want to add to Plasma the burden of CSD shadows. So after a bit of thought and talking to other Plasma people, I've decided that Plasma floating Plasma panels would not support shadows like at all. You wouldn't have, you wouldn't be able to have shadows. So you do have your floating panel, but no shadow. And I think that's not so controversial because most of the setups that I've actually seen that use floating panels do not actually use any shadow. If you think of something like that tries to mimic iOS or that sort of stuff, they don't use shadow. So it's a bit of a limitation, but there are very good technical reasons for it. So. Sorry about that. So having decided that, it was much easier to actually implement it. Uh, so I went ahead and write a bunch of code. I did actually write the code to turn off the shadow because it would be weird to have like the floating shadow. So I just turn it off and that was done. And so it's actually ready. If I'm able to, I want to show you. But there seems still an issue, which is quite a, a big one not really luckily that is that everything i worked on on last video well uh, i accidentally threw that away that was honestly an accident i didn't like check it and commit it sorry to a different branch so it, it was gone but uh, it wasn't that much, so it wasn't an issue, but when I actually tried re-implementing the same things that I did last time, they didn't work for some reason. So what I'm going to do now is show you what I did new and then try to make what I did last time work again, but this one. So first of all, we open up the correct um, repository, which is what I'm trying to show you again, the shadow, which is frameworks. So frameworks uh, in, in Plasma frameworks and to turn off the shadow, no, it's not frameworks, sorry. It's workspace because I want to go to Plasma workspace. Where is it? Workspace, source, KDE, workspace, Plasma workspace. So many directories, I, I always feel lost. And it should be shell and then panel view. So what I did and no, thank you, but I did not want to use this application. Uh, let's see if I can pop it up on the console. So we go for a git diff and there's nothing. Git branch and we can see that there should be a branch called floating panel, which is, whoops, the one I've been working on. Sorry about that. So, oh, come on. <laughs> So we check out that branch. So git check out the branch like that. Uh, we shouldn't still have any gif, but in um, log, we have the last commit, which is add code to read panel floating values. And what is that? 
we can um, show that commit. I'm getting better at Git. Like I didn't know how to do all of these things like a couple of months ago. But anyway, so we have all of these things. So this is not very interesting stuff. The interesting stuff is this one. So basically what this does is when I update the floating status, whether it's floating or not, well, uh, this one checks for the panel element of QML, the QML, sorry, panel element. And if there's no QML panel, then, oh no, let's just uh, return and that's it. We should always, I think, have a QML panel in hand. And if there is a QML panel, then we read the property floating and we convert it to a Boolean, which is either true or false. And if we are indeed floating, then we remove the shadows, else we add them. In this way, we are guaranteed to always have shadows when um, the panel is floating and never have them when it's not. So this was the nice code, the very easy one in Plasma Workspace. Now, what I had to do, I mean, all, all that I didn't show you is just uh, calling that function at the right moment, nothing too interesting. But the interesting part is now uh, that we have to actually make the panel floating from a, you know, eyes point of view, that you can actually see that it's floating. And that was what we did last time. And now I'm actually unable to do it anymore, which is weird to say the least. So um, I think I do have a lot of changes here, which are lots of, lots of them. Um, we'll get into that in another video. It's very interesting. I'm, um, uh, let's add everything and git commit, which is stuff. I'm trying to make the panel better. I'll do an entire video about that. But right now, what we're interested in is I think just master. I did not create any branch for it. So check out master, git pull, because it's always nice to git pull. Whoa, lots of stuff. This is going to take a lot of compiling. Nice. And now we can actually try to do what we did last time, which is to just add some margin around the panel when in the QML panel file, which is in containments panel, Contents UI main QML. No, it's the other one. Sorry, I, there are two QML files for the panel. If you don't know which one is which, uh, I've done a video about that too. I'll just link it in the description or something. It's in desktop package contents um, views panel. This one we've got both just for sure. Now. The idea is we have this containment parent element and the only thing we really need to do is to add some margin around it. I mean, it's, it's a bit more complicated than that, but it, it's a start. So we feel parent, but with a left margin of, I don't know, five, right margin of, I don't know, five and bottom margin of, I don't know, five. Done that, we can go back and open up the build directory, which is same, but with build instead of source. KD, workspace, plasma desktop, make, install, like this. And this is now probably the time where I have to cut the video because it's going to take years. Okay, now it's done. So we source the prefix here and we see if it worked or not. Plasma shell replace. It didn't took that long, I thought it was. Okay. So it's throwing away the bug info that I was working on, but still it should be a mess. Okay, so it makes sense. As you can see, there is actually the margin I was talking about. You can see that, I mean, there's no margin as far as the background goes, but the inside does um, take account of the margin. So we now need to add the margins for the SVG elements as well, which is, I think here, 
frame SVG item, the translucent item and the opaque one. Both of these, again, we replace the anchors. Um, I mean, we add sharp parent, but also bottom mark. I mean, we can just copy paste that other one. It's easier that way. And just by doing this, it should like work out of the box. And it did work to be fair last time I tried it. Then, sorry, in the last video I've done, but when I actually tried it again, well, it didn't work. As you can see, I was like rewatching re the video to see if I did anything weird, but I didn't. So let's see what happens this way. And hopefully, we'll actually get to see anything working. Let's throw a pseudo at it. And uh, what didn't work is that I actually got some weird, um, well, the background contrast effect and blur effect were not the same size and shape as the panel, which is, was so weird. In this case, we're kind of there. There are some issues I can see. Well, the first one being shadow, but we knew about that already. I didn't uh, yet actually do the floating variable, so that uh, we knew about. And but except that, what's this blue weird thing over here? Why is this blue? If we get into panel edit mode, well, it's still there. And that looks weird. And even before when the panel was maximized, like that, there is this weird. Ah, yes. Okay, I know what that is. Yes, as as I was as I was telling you, you can see that the contrast effect is going a bit crazy. This blue part actually comes from the background, which is taken, blurred, and contrast affected to become blue, so that when you actually overlay the panel, it gets bluer as well. However, it shouldn't be there. It's in the wrong position compared. You can even see here that we are actually lacking something. It's, this is wrong and it's annoying. What happens if we maximize a window? Okay, so the transparent SVG is in the same place of the uh, other one, which in theory should make everything work, which it doesn't. And there's no other SVG that could like break this. And if we, I don't know, Let's say we only consider the bottom margin like that. We should get uh, like in this situation where it's just floating. It's already a bit better than last time I tried it, but it shouldn't be there though. So we restart the plasma shell and let's see where this takes us. And this looks good, believe it or not, this actually looks good because uh, knowing that we'll actually take into account the width of the margin down here into the panel height, well, we also need to make the bottom corner rounded. I think I did that last time in the video. It's not that hard, but of course it shouldn't uh, it should also work if uh, we had some left and right margin. Anyway, that was actually just everything I wanted to say for the update. This was not like a fully fledged um, devlog. It just uh, I just wanted to say I, I'm still working on this and hopefully it shouldn't take too much. I hope like a, a week or two until I'm in a um, state where I can actually propose a merge request and could be worse, I don't know. See you next time.